Hello friends, Harosha Scheib, and I have, oh, I, I actually have to sit with this episode another time before I can really, th it, this is a very emotional episode and there's some layers into it. Uh, we saw what happened to Tyra Wellick. We saw, um, you know, his time period from the night of the 5-9 hack and all the way up to him meeting Elliot, uh, getting in the taxi cab to him shooting Elliot. Uh, we also saw some scenes in between with Darlene and Cisco and the Fimpton cell and who programmed it and a little bit more of the nature of Irvin in this episode, what his relationship with uh, the Dark Army is. Um, one thing I, I like about this episode is it, it confirms that Tyra Wellick does love his son, does love his wife, wants to be with him. That was something that was very one-sided the last season where we didn't really know like what Tyrell, because he wasn't really there, what his uh, feelings are, you know, how attached to he, is he really to Joanne. And you can see that he is a bit lost without her. Uh, but he's very determined. He's obviously seeking a higher purpose, a higher power, which he feels he got from Elliot. Uh, but we kind of see that somewhat unraveling a little bit uh, by the fact that he shot Elliot and Angela. Um, I know I'm kind of skipping around here in the episode, but Angela, uh, whew, kind of hinting or telling Tyrell that sometimes Elliot can be another person. Uh Okay, so Pulp Fiction. We saw a little hint of Pulp Fiction this episode. Uh, we saw how it was that I, that uh, the gun that Darlene stole from that guy, put in the popcorn machine, was fired, fired by Mr. Robot slash Elliot at Tyrell. It was a misfire. And if you ever seen Pulp Fiction, you know that there's a scene where uh, Samuel L. Jackson's character, I always forget what his character is, it's basically Samuel Jackson and uh, Vince Vega played by uh, John DeVolta or shot out by a by a guy that busts out um, <laughs> from the bathroom and no bullets hit them but there's like a bunch of bullets behind them and it seems like that where it was like a a misfire or an act of God as, as in the case of Tyra Wellick who kind of goes into the belief system of Samuel Jackson believes an act of God a miracle happened and there's a purpose for all this Elliot's kind of the Vince Vega character here, whereas, no, it's a coincidence, and Tyrell's crazy. They're both crazy. They're different types of crazy. Uh, oh, confirmation, Santiago is Dark Army. And a complete douche. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, Irvin actually does run a... Uh, a uh, car dealership. That was interesting. He is a social engineer. I guess you could say es expert. He's not much of a technical person. And he is writing a novel, but it doesn't seem like a very well crafted or developed novel. Don't know what to make of it uh, from what we've seen of there. So there is some truth to him that has been hinted or told about. But he is a pack full of lies, if you will. Uh, nice to see Angela. Nice to see Darlene. Nice to see Cisco. There was no Dom. There was no Philip Price. There was White Rose in her Minister Song form. I'm going to say my thoughts on that, that scene, and just in general. I think what this episode did was it, it gives, it filled in some backgrounds of, of just how big and in depth this plan is. How there's more going on than just F Society and Elliot and his stage two. There's we saw hints of that last episode with Philip Price and White Rose confrontation, but now this is just a deepering of it in the the large scale nature of Dark Dark Army slash China's um, scope of this plan. Uh, it's very much nation statish, if you will. It's interesting that it filters in. Um, I, I like this pause. I like this depth of the characterization. I, I, I have a feeling because it's too similar to what last season, which I enjoyed, that some people are not going to like this episode. They were just like, 
get, 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 uh, because we are, we do have a time clock. We have 11 days to the UN annexation vote in the Congo. And we're going to see whether one, Philip Price delivers, two, if White Rose delivers with stage two, three, if Elliot is successful in stopping stage two, or if Mr. Robot is successful in stage two, because I think his, Mr. Robot stage two and White Rose Dark Army stage two are completely different things. And I mean, we see what they are, completely different things, but completely different things and it goes back to my theory episode um if you see you can watch it on youtube um, f society roc podcast or listen to it on the podcast um i will put it up uh, again in the facebook chat group um you know does elliot slash mr robot know white roses connection uh to the washington township plant you know does is he aware that she's also minister strong um, and the extent of that, it, it seems someone who is such a strategist and so smart is unaware of these things, but why Rose is very good. She's very good with masks. Uh, she's very good at controlling time and place. And she actually, absolutely has far greater resources than what Elliot is dealing with. Um, also she has a bit of a sense of humor. She actually kind of appreciated that Elliot stole flipper, which is amusing. Oh, we saw Leon. I think he's going to make a comeback strong this season. I don't think that's the last of us seeing him. And it's pretty much it. Um, overall, I, I like this episode. I like the kind of the breakdown and the teardown of Tyra Wellick as a character. I think we've always kind of sort of known that the the corporate CEO thing was a very much a facade. And then he has had multiple facades, and we saw the breakdown of that. Uh, it's interesting his belief system, how he believes so heavily heavily into Elliot, in an almost a joyful, zealot, happy way. I think though that when he does find out that Joanne Wellick is dead, his wife is dead which is something that I think is going to be kept hidden from him when he does find out. Um, it's going to really upset him. The fact that he has a nanny cam on his uh, child and that he no longer sees that image, I think is going to disturb him. Um, the fact that he does have access to the internet, or at least has been given access to the internet on a consistent basis for them to hide that information, I don't think they're going to be able to hide it for long. So it'll be interesting to see what his reaction will be once he finds out that his wife is dead. I know the FBI is covering it up. We kind of now know why really the FBI is covering it up, or at least from Santiago's angle of it. But, yeah, it's it was very intriguing. Like I said, I'm going to have to watch it again because I think I'm sure there's things I have missed. I'm sure there's some background stuff that I missed or clues. Uh, it's a very meta, I want to say meta, meta as in pop culture meta, but like a meta, meditation, uh, episode where you, you, there was a lot of self-reflection, which is something you're not seeing too much by all the characters or you're starting to really see in the direction, but like a very long take of it. You're seeing bits and pieces like Darlene self-reflecting about the fact that she lost somebody she truly dearly, dearly loved, Cisco, and what it is she's really doing, why she's doing it for. We saw some hints of it when she killed Susan um, Jacobs. And her breakdown there, the panic attack, uh, being in, in the clutches of the FBI. Uh, she She's doing a little bit self-reflected, I, I guess, of her position. But she seems still somewhat committed to her cause, to her purpose. She just wants to do it in a way that I guess works or is fulfilling, or at least with Elliot by her side. Elliot, of course, has done some self-reflection, and he has come to the conclusion that E Corp, as he calls it now, needs to be wrangled and um, his power needs to be harnessed for good. And Seishu needs to not happen. Tyrell Wellick is, of course, his self reflection is his complete commitment to Elliot and making stage two work. And it seems like he was the one who fully developed the complete plan for stage two. But um, I guess they hinted that the fact that there's a back channel aspect to it between him and Elliot um, from the prison. So. There is that. Mm. 
I overall, I, I really enjoyed the episode. I like some of the revelations that came, you know, White Rose, uh, Frank, um, Santiago, that confirmation, a little bit more about Irvin and how much of a fool of the shit he is. He's probably a better social engineer than I say darling. I know everyone talks about Elliot, how he's very good at social engineering, but his social engineering is very, like, technical aspect. It's not that very human, jovial, like, really fully playing humans not tricking them or finding a weakness but pulling pulling a person to you is a very different social engineering aspect and that's something that Irvin does uh that his type of manipulation which is to some extent what Darlene does um as well nice to see Angela again um yeah that's pretty much it that's my thoughts uh we'd like to know what your thoughts are in the comments below um, but yeah, it's, it was different. I, again, I think they needed this pause because like I said, they had that 11 day, they put a time clock on this season, 11 days, UNN annex, uh, is the stage two going to blow up? What's happening? There's a lot of, a lot of balls in the air and some of them are dropping and, and they're are going to be dropping like uh, water balloons and psh, and it, people are going to get a little wet, a little splash, nothing, no big deal. Or they're going to be like freaking bombs and minefields and absolute explosions and people are going to get wrecked so we'll see uh but that's it uh thank you for listening and uh logging off for now and until next time friends